plugin, uh, use the tap in, uh, that's a buffer basically. We get rid of that, we don't need that anymore. So tap in, create a tap out, so that allows us to play samples out of that buffer. And the dynamic buffer keeps going as it's playing. Uh, it's two seconds worth in that buffer. I create a second plug out over here and a second plug in just to make things kind of neat. I suppose I could have just dragged the patch cords around, but uh, they get messy. So I'm going to have a, a separate path over here, and it runs perfectly in parallel to the regular plug in plug out. They're the same ones. I only have stereo and stereo. Out. Okay, so copy the tap in, tap out. One for the right channel, and I got one for the left channel. Voila! Okay, now you hear some delay going on, right? Very cool. That's your start. Alright, now uh, we want to be able to control that a bit. So, first thing we do is we're going to create a live object. It's going to be a slider, and that's going to be our. Ready, right, here we go. Is our. Be our uh, let's see. Our mix over here. Now we can multiply the output by something. We're basically going to cut the output of the delay in half for now. Grab two of these over here as well, so you can cut the live in half as well. So we have to like uh, cut them by some fraction, some proportion, so that we don't overload the output. Okay. So by default, since nothing's attached, we're cutting the signal by half there, and we cut the signal by half over here. Okay. So the patch cords. Whoop. and everything again. Now we take the output of the slider and first thing let's uh, go ahead and make this from 0 to 1 and it should be a float. And, whoops, no not that one. Ah, whoops. Escape. Alright, the output of that one, that's going to be our wet amount. Let's drag that, that over there. And now we have to do something for our dry amount. Let's, let's move that over there out of the way. Now for dry amount, we have to invert that. From Instead of going from 0 to 1, we have to go from 1 to 0. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to first, just to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to use a send. And that just basically is a kind of a wormhole. Uh, it's going to go in uh, send WD mix, then going to receive it over here in WD mix. That just basically is a, a shortcut, so I don't have uh, patch cords running all over the place. So I receive the output of WD mix over here. And I can subtract one from it. So one becomes zero, 0.5 becomes negative uh, 0.5. So I get the absolute value of that. Um, oh, what's wrong with this picture? Uh, okay, that doesn't need to be a tilde there. Sorry about that. Uh, but this does need to be float. So okay, this goes to there, there, and of course I need to receive the value of WMix there. All right. So, let's demonstrate. Lock up my patch, slide, and if I put it in the middle, I'm getting half of each. If I'm getting you know, all the way on one side, I get all wet, all the other side, I get all dry. Um, so we're good to go. All right, that's the basics. Now, let's control the amount of delay. So I'm gonna use a dial for that. Uh, look in there, and let's see. I'm gonna make it range from zero to, say, 250. 5, whoops, 255. Uh, I'm going to make it an integer and take the signal format into my tap outputs. Okay, there you go. Now I can control the amount of delay. And here's the results in the middle. Again, wet, dry. Or dry, wet. Okay, what else can we do? Real quick, trying to keep this under, certainly under 10 minutes, maybe, ooh, around five, uh, we're gonna run a little long. Okay, quick though, what the heck, let's try something more fun. Uh, let's see what happens if we do some delay, like we have, excuse me, not delay, we're gonna do some feedback, all right? More of an echo kind of thing going on here. What happens, ready? Bang! Oh, that's kind of scary, that's unrestricted feedback. You don't wanna do that. Uh, we need to do something, we need to cut it down uh, each iteration around, we need to kind of control the amount. So we're going to cut it by half again, so half the signal that comes out, we're going to come back around again, and feed back in again. Alright, so now we have the signal cut by half, we'll be a little careful. Do the same thing on the other side. 
nothing. And now we just need to have some way of controlling it. Let's uh, make another dial. And this dial we need to make go from 0 to 1, so 0 to 55. It has to be a float. Because these points, we, we, you know, if we didn't make it a float, we should go 0, 1 and switch, and that would be bad. And let's call this one feedback. It up. Let's give it a try. Let's see. Be careful, hit one, you're gonna get that uncontrolled feedback again, so we can kind of create this kind of cool flanging going on. Yay, alright. And once again, let's try mix. Pretty cool, huh? Alright, what else can we do? Well, uh, something worthwhile is probably neatening things up a bit. So, let's uh, first name these things. So we have a short name. I'm going to make that one uh, delay. Okay. And in time. There's time, alright. And this other one is going to be our Alright, now we also have to make sure that they are added to the presentation. We're going to show you how presentation mode works. And the presentation, switch to presentation mode, and everything but the things that are in presentation mode disappear, which is nice. Move these over here, and I want them to be kind of all the way over to the left. Uh, okay. Uh, all the way over to the left so that our, in our live device they show up in the correct spots. So we drag this over here. So, and now we need to tell the patch room inspector that we want it to open in presentation mode. Close that. And close that. Save it. Oops. We're going to call it, what are we going to call it? New delay. And there it is. Ta da! Real simple, quick uh, Max audio effect. A lot of these things are in the Max tutorials. So if you have Max, I expect that you've probably uh, you know, seen a lot of these things. Go through uh, tutorials like 27, 28, 29, those kind of things. Uh, for those, hopefully, you know, those of you who probably don't already have Max for Live will find this a little bit more useful to kind of figure out, you know, the kind of things that you could do with Max for Live. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time.